Can I get arrested for saying that? Okay, I'll squeeze my lungs. Just <laughs> squeeze your lungs. <laughs> yeah, come over, feel these lungs. <laughs> Tell your classmates what that feels like. What do they feel like? It's mushy. Mushy. It. Spongy. Yeah. That's pretty big though, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing is our lungs never actually get this big. Our lungs actually get a lot smaller than this because our rib cage, it's called our pleura, sort of keeps our lungs engaged so that when we take a breath in, it actually only goes like this. So if you were to crack open your rib cage and pull apart your ribs and actually expand your lungs, they would get about this big. You think these are sick, nasty, diseased lungs? Mm -mm. No, these are healthy lungs. I touch it. <laughs> Not without gloves on. Kind of do I my favorite. Go inside my bags and grab the other blue, blue tub there. I'm gonna touch it. I'm gonna touch it. I'm gonna touch it. Me too. And trace spots over here, Connie. Go ahead. You go in there. Hook it up. Oh, Come on, Connie. You are the woman. Hook it up. <laughs> go ahead. Put it up. Connect it to the top there and just push it up nice. nice and hard. Yep. And then pump it up a couple times with your foot. Ain't gonna break. Just push it. Up. Yeah, just like that. Good. Real hard. Good. Now pump it up a few times with your Why do you think they're all black like that? Tar. Yeah, tar. Very good. That's the tar. Why are they two different shapes? What do you think this is right here? This thing is starting to break apart. Cancer? Yeah, that's cancer. That's what cancer Where? looks like. Over here. We turn around so she can do the cancer. You know, Ew! What the heck is it? <laughs> it's so disturbing. I want you to squeeze right around here, right where I'm here. Try to squeeze it right there. What does it feel? A little higher. Is it hard? Right there. What does it feel like? It's hard. Yeah, there's this big tumor blocking the airway that you can see when Connie tries to inflate it. Go ahead and pump it up. There's this big tumor right about here that you can see when Connie tries to inflate it that the bottom part doesn't inflate at all. And that's why people that have lung cancer get really short of breath because their lower lung tissue is non-functional. They don't get any oxygen here. So they're really breathing with like one and a half lungs. So when people have lung cancer and they get short of breath, this is the reason why. Go ahead, try to pump it up again. You can see it's blocking that whole airway to the lower lung. That's why this is like stale, dead lung tissue. They don't smell like anything. That's because they have uh, preservatives and stuff on it so that we can keep using it. So they don't smell too bad. After about a year, they get really nasty. So they're not. Where did you get that? We, um, we took them. We got them out of high school People dropout kids. Kids that drop out of uh, Truman and take them out of their lungs. So we figured they're not really going to be good for anything. So we might as well use their lungs for teaching purposes. Mm. I'm just playing with y'all. We're looking like I'm serious. Okay. Okay. Dead okay. people's lungs? Take... People donate them. They, would dead people? So you think people can live without their lungs? Honey, you take a shot dead. of this. That is so... Sanitize out. And if I was smoking, I would throw myself. What are you videotaping? The biopsy part. They take a chunk of their lung tissue like this. They what is she going to do now? Like this. Uh, you should put your hand up there. Uh, okay. <laughs> they take Maybe you just throw my appetite. Like <laughs> you see the end of this as I open and close it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to see it, so let me show you this way. It's like they're like little grabbers. You see how they're little grabbers like this? Yeah. What is happening? And what they do is they stick this inside your lung. And they grab a chunk of your lung tissue like this, and, pull it out. and they yank it, Doink! and they stick it on a slide, and then they send it to the lab, and the, and the lab doctor looks at it under a microscope to see if you have lung cancer or not. Don't that hurt? I see it. Don't you cry if I grab your skin. Hmm. <laughs> so the little grabbers, right? Little grabbers, and they took it out, and like this, it's like my girl said, I don't know what she is, but I think she said it. She said it doesn't help people, but the reality is when we do this procedure. And we show patients, say, check it out, this is what we just got out of your lungs. And they look at this black, nasty lung tissue like the one you just saw. And we say, check it out, this is what your lungs are supposed to look like. And it's a nice, pink, healthy, and this is what we just got out of your lungs. And they go, oh, that is so nasty. That's my lungs. Yep, that's what we just got out of your lungs. Do you think that's enough to make people quit smoking? No. 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 Many times it's not. Many times, as soon as they hear that news, they're like, oh, this is nasty. They get in their car, they drive home. What are they doing on the way home? Smoke a cigarette. Yeah, they smoke a cigarette. It's not because they're stupid. Not because they don't believe it. It's because of that, because they get addicted. So guys, my encouragement to you is I'm not really here to preach to you guys and tell you what how to live your lives. My encouragement to you is if you if you're a smoker, if you decided to smoke, that's your business. But I really want to encourage you to try to cut back as much as you can until eventually you can just quit. Because what happens is if you don't have any desire, if you have no desire to quit smoking at all, that's trouble. And it's only trouble because then you can become addicted. If at least in your brain you say, you know what, I know I smoke, but I'm really going to cut back and I'm just going to try to quit. That's, that's what I want from you. I just want to encourage you to just the best you can to cut back on your smoking until eventually you can just get away from it. That's not a part of your life. Smoking is fun. Smoking smoke. is expensive. Smoking is a nuisance. Smoking is something that a lot of times in public places you're not even allowed to do anymore. So I just want to encourage you guys not to make it a part of your, your life for the rest of your life.
I appreciate your time today, guys. Thanks for listening to my uh, my stuff today. If anybody has a question, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Some of the stuff that we talked about. Today. All right, thank you for your time. Diseases. When I work in a hospital where we work with all different kinds of diseases, so I want to talk about some diseases. Talk about what they are. You heard of these diseases all the time, but I try to explain to you in normal terms what they are so you can understand. Talk to you about how people get these diseases. And talk to you about how we treat them. Because I brought some equipment from the hospital to share with you guys how we treat some of these diseases. I really want to talk about the top four leading causes of death in America, about diseases, when people die of different diseases. Four different diseases. Number five is accidents, which isn't really a disease, but that's number five. Adults, grown up, what do you think is number one? Alcohol. Alcohol is not a disease. Why could this be? It's not the top five. It's not the top five. Cancer. Cancer is a good one, but that's number two. Good job, Shelly. AIDS, not this country, AIDS is in the top of the country at all. Um, AIDS. HIV is AIDS. Herpes. Herpes, yes, right, herpes. Gonorrhea. Yeah, you're not going to go, gonorrhea, no. <laughs> you're saying all the same stuff. STDs? You think STDs is the number one cause of death in America in adults? No, I don't think so. Cigarette. Herb. Herb. Oh, you. No, that's not the thing. Oh my god. Hey, number one, what do most people die of? Heart disease, right? Heart disease. Number three is a stroke. Number four is lung cancer. Number five is heart disease. Number six is cancer. I bet every single one of us has heard of all these diseases. I'm going to try to explain to you just in normal terms what they mean, how people get them, how we treat them. Heart disease. Our heart looks just like this, right? No. And it has a bunch of blood vessels. The heart's nothing like that. Oh, it's not? All right. It has a bunch of blood vessels, and they carry something real important in the blood. Does anybody know what it is? Something called oxygen. It carries oxygen to our heart. And sometimes, for some reason, a certain part of our heart muscle, because our heart is actually a muscle, doesn't get enough oxygen, and it becomes damaged. We have a damaged heart muscle. That's what heart attack is. When you don't get enough oxygen to your heart, your heart becomes damaged. There's certain things that we call risk factors. A risk factor is something that puts you at risk for a disease. So what's a risk factor for a heart attack? What, how do people get heart attacks? What's one of them? How do people get heart attacks? Any guesses? How do people get heart attacks? What was that? How is it? When you get scared. When you get scared? Ah! You die of a heart attack? No, when you get in shock. That happen. Um, when you're getting shot. It's not only old people that get heart attacks. Number one is junk food, right? Your diet. If you eat too much fat, don't they tell you if you eat too much fat that so you get a heart attack, right? Oh, yeah. Heart attack if you eat too much fat. Chocolate. Chocolate. No, chocolate don't cover. Smoking. We know that smoking cigarettes causes heart attack. Drinking? Drinking can cause a heart attack. Nah. It's drinking and some drugs. And then the last one is a family history. <laughs> Alright, so how does this happen? Let me tell you how this happens real quick. Diet is an easy one because you eat too much junk food and all the fat in the foods that we eat accumulate on the inside walls of your artery so that the blood trying to get to your heart can't get there very well. So let me show you what we need to do to treat this. One of the things, of course, is just medicine. You give people medicine to keep their arteries open. But the other thing I use is a cardiac catheter. Do you hear a cardiac catheter? Are you hear somebody has a cardiac catheter? This is what a cardiac catheter looks like. It's a catheter this big. It has a needle at one end. I took it off because I could see myself. It has a needle. Excuse me. Yes. Can I have $48 in the office for about a minute? Sure. I'm about to say. Please don't call me again. So this catheter then goes inside all the way inside your arm, all the way through your artery like this until it gets to your heart. It gets to your heart. Sometimes they put it down here by your groin. It's all the way inside here. Your heart. It goes all the way like this, and it gets real close to the heart here. And then what it is is it's a little. It has little bristles at the end of this. It sort of looks like a toothbrush, like this. And they actually stick it inside your right, and it cleans it. It goes like. It's called angioplasty. Have you heard of angioplasty? 
Angioplasty is when they actually stick a brush inside there and trying to clean out the plaque on the inside walls of your artery. 